Hello. And I'm going to make up a little tidbit of information. A simple and readily available VHF signal source. Uh, a lot of people probably have sitting around that they don't even realize. But uh, and that would be a scanner. And how can you use a scanner as a VHF signal source for general testing and fiddling around? Well, like this Radio Shack, old Radio Shack Pro 2030, which is actually a unit and scanner, private labeled. On the inside, you'll see the PLL, or local oscillator section. There's a standalone board ready made that they just put in place and solder in place. Because of that, has a discrete buffered local oscillator output that feeds the rest of it. And it's an easy thing to tap into if you like on this one here. It's just this pin right here. Let me refocus the camera. Yeah, it's somewhat better. And the local oscillator output is this pin here. And the ground is right next to it. So all you have to do is tap off these two points. Run it to an external jack. And you would have the local oscillator out where you can hook it into an external piece of equipment. With this radio here, the local oscillator appears to uh, run between a hundred and that's him gone from memory a hundred and eighteen megahertz all the way up to a uh, hundred and sixty three megahertz and stuff so if you need a signal source pretty much within that range and five kilohertz steps then it's pretty simple here let's see Program this one to 150, yeah. and even without tapping in directly to the local oscillator board, the scanner has so much local oscillator leakage that you can even receive it without even directly connecting to it. I have this radio set to 148 megahertz. And the scanner local oscillator is 10.8 megahertz below the receive frequency. So to generate a signal 148 megahertz, I'd type in, make sure it's on program, 158.8. Enter. And you see the radio lights up. Because it's receiving a local oscillator out of here and if you just want to test the functionality or receive that the receive works on a little handheld or another radio then you don't even have to do anything more on that just know what the local oscillator offset is type in the frequency and you've got a quick easy receive test source you can even get a little funny with it. I guess here I've t programmed in 158.805, 158 .8, and 158.795 in three channels and do a quick scan. And you got a three Three frequency testing on it's a pretty obvious and easy to spot. So, and again, if you're actually wanting to hook it into an external piece of equipment, and all you have to do is just directly tap into those points and run it to an external source, and opens up a lot of possibilities like having several different frequencies programmed and scanning across all of them and that way you can uh, basically have it 
frequency hopping from one place to another and use that as a source for testing a radio or something like that. But a little powerful little frequency source if you use it to its capabilities. Stuff as I said, normal oscillator on this runs from 118.8 up to 163 or so. That's for the VHF and UHF uh, receive section output. And when you have it shifted to VHF low, then it shifts to, uh, I think, 40 to 60 megahertz on the output. It shifts to the other oscillator and goes 40 to 60 megahertz on the receive section, uh, on the local oscillator section. Stuff. So, two ranges it operates in. Just a little helpful bit of info if you might find useful. Take care. Take it easy.